and welcome everybody to games over plastic this is a special episode we don't know what we're going to call it yet maybe special episode one maybe dlc one we are getting together today to do a spoiler cast for final fantasy 7 rebirth a game which was amazing that we all just recently beat um, so that's what we're going to be doing today this entire episode is just going to be us talking about and spoiling that's your warning final fantasy 7 rebirth on the playstation 5 um i am midnight as always and i am joined i'm very thrilled to be joined once again by our amazing co-host who unfortunately couldn't make it to last week's episode but he's back again the man the myth the legend the master platinum trophy hunter sean mason who just finished the race how you doing sean I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, I actually, yeah, I just did a half marathon. Not my first half marathon. Won't be my last, obviously. But uh, the entire time, I listened to Final Fantasy VII music. It's a combination of the OG soundtrack and the remake soundtrack. Unfortunately, Rebirth soundtrack is not on Spotify yet. So mm -hmm. I can't add that. That will be added to the playlist. But yeah, nothing like some Final Fantasy VII music to get you fired up to go run 13.1 miles. To get your pumped. This was this was your first um, big race in a while since you had your uh, your your accident, right? Yeah, it was the first. Um, like I had done a couple like smaller races, but um, this is my first one in a year and a half since my you know since my accident a year and a half ago, and um, it felt great. Didn't get the PR. I just won twenty two thirty one, so an hour and twenty two minutes and thirty one seconds. So not my PR, but um, it felt great to just be out there. And um, yeah, it was awesome. Went out to breakfast after. Even though so, I already had breakfast before. So you said an hour and 22 minutes was your time? Yeah, in 31 seconds, yeah. So that's 82 minutes, and it was 13 miles, right? 13.1. 13 yeah. So that's a 6.26-minute uh, mile, which I'm not a racer. I, I have no train of thought. I mean, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm fat, guys. I don't know. But that seems pretty good to me. Is that, that pretty good? Six-minute mile? Uh, I mean, I don't want to, like, you know, I'm not trying to brag. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's pretty good, yeah. I All mean. Right. Most run, people like, four miles in that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, most people try like when they're like aiming for like a half marathon or like a mar they like half marathon people are, like I want to finish in under two hours or in like a marathon people are, like I want to finish in under four hours. But like for me, it's uh, I've always been like I want to do like one. I always aim for like one fifteen to one twenty for a half marathon, and then a full marathon I'm aiming for sub three. So all right, well that's what's up. Very very nice of you getting back on the saddle again. It's good stuff. We're happy for you. Um, next, we have our second co-host here. He is the graphics guru, the man who does the amazing artwork that you see. He is the indie and live service gaming maestro, Hodge. How you doing, my friend? I'm good. I'm still getting over the New York flu. Uh, my nose has been stuffy since Monday, basically. Uh, but I just got back from a Breaking Benjamin concert last night, which was freaking awesome. So they did play Blow Me Away. I was wrong. I was so adamant they wouldn't play it because I thought it was just a soundtrack get, uh, song. But they did play it. So the Halo 2 fan in me went crazy listening to that song. And that uh, yeah, was awesome. But I'm back. I'm ready to record and talk about some Final Fantasy. Heck yeah. That sounds good. So you get you got sick and then you went to the concert and got everyone else sick. No, I'm just I'm just playing. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. I, I, well, I, yeah, like Sunday night after the concert, we were out at the bar. I was hanging out with uh, Lord Cognito and a, a bunch of the LSM guys and a bunch of buddies and stuff. And my throat started tickling, which usually is just allergies. I've, I get that all the time, especially in the spring. But then I woke up, my nose was stuffed. I'm like, eh, it's also allergies. But then I got home and I started with feeling achy. I was like, OK, now I'm sick. And then by Wednesday, or by the next day, I wasn't achy anymore, but my nose has been stuffed ever since. So I'm like, it's probably a mix of getting sick in New York and my allergies just kicking my ass because they always do in the spring. I, I once was able not able to run for an entire spring because I just couldn't breathe for an entire spring, and it was terrible. But, yeah, hopefully it'll go away soon. So <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Well, well we yeah. hope you feel better soon. Concert sounds like a lot of fun. All right, let me awesome. get... Let me get the administrative stuff out of the way, and then we're going to hop right in it. So Games Over Plastic, as you guys know, this is the podcast for the agnostic gamers. All games over here, no console wars. We just have fun. Uh, it will be up on my YouTube channel, Midnight DT. So YouTube.com slash Midnight DT, or just search for Games Over Plastic if you want to see the video version, which features cams um, and may feature some gameplay if I decide to. Well, I'm going to be editing the video if I want to throw in some random gameplay clips. I might, but either way. We are also available on podcast services everywhere, Spotify, 
Apple Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, every cast that you can think of, you can find us. So we appreciate your support. Please, as we are a brand new podcast, you know, we're struggling to to find an audience and and to to gain traction. Anything you can do to help likes, comments on the video on YouTube really do help on the algorithm. They look for that. On podcast services, you can leave us five star ratings or as Hodge said, maybe even a four star. <laughs> but we would prefer five. Um, it doesn't cost anything. We appreciate your support. Um, this will go up. The podcast goes up every other Monday, but this is a special episode. So we are coming to you in the off week. So that's the administrative stuff. With all that said, let's get into this, shall we? We yeah. did. We did beat Sean. You were on say something. Oh, I just. I was just gonna about to jump in. I, I had it's on. He's ready to go. All right. Yeah. All right. One's, all right. Let me go ahead and pass the ball over to Sean Mason. We just beat Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I believe is a PlayStation exclusive. Right? It's not on PC, is it? PS5. Uh, yep. PS5. Great game, Sean. Take it away. What were your thoughts? All right. First of all, 10 out of 10 game. I- outstanding. It's definitely my game of the year. I-, I don't see anything beating it. But I have to talk about the ending right now. We got to jump oh, right I'll in. Just, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Six minutes in, right to the ending. Let's go. We're, ter- right we're in Tarantinoing this. Go and start the end. I, I haven't been able to talk about it with anyone because um, nobody's we- beaten it yet that, um, that I've talked to about it. My dad hasn't beaten it yet because he's been de- dealing with a bunch of other stuff. So I can't talk to anyone yet. But, okay. So when. Sephiroth comes down and Cloud blocks with a stab over Aerith. I was like, oh my god, she's gonna live. She she's alive. And then you get the like the chick chick noise. Yeah. And then you realize she really did get stabbed. I started crying. I, I couldn't believe it. Aerith really grew on me in this game. I'm telling you, she really grew on me. I was not a big air Aer- not that I wasn't a fan of her, but throughout this game, she really grew on me. I think her character was great. And I started crying. I'm like, dang it, they're really gonna kill her. But She's alive in another world, in another timeline, with Zack. I love that. The fact that there's like these two different universes going on, where Zack and Aerith are alive, and Cloud is alive with the party, and the fact that Cloud still sees Aerith in his world, but no one else can see her, it's crazy. I, my, I have a feeling that the only people who like can acknowledge that there's like another world, I guess, where, this, where I guess they... um all of them died at in Midgar before they left. The only people who know that are like Zack, Aerith, and Cloud. And the only reason why I think Cloud and Zack know is because I think they're linked together. And oh my gosh, playing as Zack against Sephiroth at the end there, oh my gosh. I, I was just I was blown away, but I was just a ball of emotions. I couldn't believe it. But I'm so <laughs> glad that Aerith is somehow alive in the other, I guess, I don't know if we're calling it a timeline or another world. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the ending right there. Sorry. Okay, I do just want to remind everybody, um, you, my co-hosts, of course, um, and the the cast here, that we will not be spoiling the original Final Fantasy VII or um, uh, what what was the other one called? Crisis Core. Crisis Core. We're not going to spoil those because one of the hosts here is a loser and hasn't played the original yet. We're not going to say who or anything, but um, <laughs> he's. I'm going to play it this year, so please don't spoil that. But we are definitely going to spoil Rebirth, and you know, remake is fair game too. Yeah, I, I am going to say some of the spoilers for Rebirth, though, are going to spoil the original game. Yeah, well, well, of course, but I already experienced Rebirth. But let's try not yeah. to let's try not to spoil anything that was from the original that wasn't in Rebirth. It is. Please. I mean, it is crazy that in part three of this remake, it, you're going to find out that it's a prequel to Kingdom Hearts and that Sora's at the end. But yeah, it's it's crazy. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I at first I, when I was watching that part with the where he's. Is that in his head that he blocks it, or did something shift no, to where I, he missed? Here's my my perspective. My perspective is that the reason why Cloud sees it as he that he blocked it, I think it's alluding to the fact that she's alive in the other time in the other world. I think that's what oh. it is. Like, oh, it's it's a it's alluding to the fact that yeah, she's alive in this other world with Zach, not in your world anymore. Mm. That's that was my interpretation of it. I got mm. you. Um, w- as long with the, we'll get into it later more, but the, the thing is it, like in the original, yeah, I felt really nothing for Aerith. Like it's a huge moment in the original game when that happens, but this game we'll talk about more other people, but every character in this game gets like their story and you feel for every single person in this game. So I love that this game did that. We'll get into it later when we talk about other characters, but yeah, they definitely made you feel for Aerith definitely more in this one. Yeah. So. 
I was a little confused. I guess we're talking about the ending instantly. So wait, I guess if we're <laughs> going to talk about the ending right away, um, I was a little bit confused. Uh, the reason why this game is not a 10 out of 10 for me is because Aerith is dead and I don't like that. Obviously, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> everybody, I mean, that's the spoiler that everybody knows about. It's like, it's like the, yeah, Darth that's, it's like the, yeah, it's the Luke, I'm your father. That, so he was dead obviously, the whole time ending. I knew that that was going to happen, but I still was very upset that it happened. And I was also confused because I'm watching and I'm like, she didn't get stabbed, did she? I'm like, did I look away at the screen for like half a second and miss, <laughs> and miss her getting stabbed? Because it didn't look to me like she got stabbed. And then all of a sudden she's di she's dying on the ground and she's dead. And I'm, and then all of a sudden, like they show that scene uh, at the end where they're like out uh, by the airplane. It's the beautiful scenery. And then Arif shows up and I'm like, yes, she's alive. And then I'm like, wait, no. She that's that's ghost Aerith. That's she's not really alive, and I'm pissed. So I can't. I know you want to come in, Sean, but hold on. I can't give this a ten out of ten because they killed Aerith. She might be alive in another world, and they they uh, they kind of hinted that maybe she'd be come back because they're talking about reunion, you know, whatever reunion. So maybe they're going to bring Aerith back to life, um, which I believe would be a change of pace from the original. But they could do that. They they are making some changes. Um, but Aerith is by far. It's not even close. Aerith is the best girl, in my opinion, in this game by so far and away. Like, I, I don't under, even understand how there's an argument. Aerith is the best. Um, go ahead. Sean, did you want to jump in or Hodge? Well, yeah, I just, you know, she's not, I mean, she's dead in, in the world we're mainly playing in, but she's still alive in the other, in the other world. And, you know, I, I, I don't need that Marvel you know, BS, Sean. I kind of take offense to the fact you're, you're, you're taking a point off the game here because a character you liked died. You know, I don't, I don't think that, you know, that takes them off of the quality of the game here. Right. Well, to be fair, I'm not taking a full point off. I'm just saying it's not a 10 out of 10. If I had to rate it, it was probably like a 9.4 out of 10 or something. You know what I mean? Um, but if Aerith was alive, honestly, I would be real tempted to be like, it's 10 out of 10, guys. My girl. But she is alive. I don't want to hear about the Marvel BS multiverse, okay? She's she's a ghost. She's dead in our world, and I don't. And I'm sad, okay. I'm I think sad. you're going to be in for a rude awakening in part three. Then, when the the timelines combine and Aerith and Zach come back to the to the world we're playing in, and everyone's back. Well, I I hope so. Um, Hodge, I saw you were wanting to get in there. What what were your thoughts on that? Well, I guess we can get into the best girl conversation because all right. For a while, I was on the train of Aerith's best girl, but it's because up until literally playing this game, not even remake, I th always thought and assumed that Tifa and Barrett were married. I had no idea until this game that they weren't even together cuz the it, it it they don't they're always together in the original, so I and I mean Barrett's water's white, so I was like or Asian, so I was like, oh, "Okay, it's Tifa's kid." No, had no idea um that uh hold on i'll turn it down a little bit uh i had no idea that they weren't together so and then the fact that Aerith the entire game is basically like i wish you were zach basically is basically her mindset towards uh is her <laughs> mindset towards cloud and up until they're on the ferris wheel and she's like i always wanted to be with zach but right now i want to be with you i'm like that's a lie you want to be with zach at all times this is bullshit you're lying you're you're counting on him for second place whereas the entire game tifa has been in love with cloud since she was a kid and she has always been loyal to him and loves cloud and that is why tifa is best girl because i don't think you know as someone who didn't play the original game um i don't have the the reference and the train of mind that you guys have about like how great tifa is i honestly feel like these remakes haven't done tifa um any favors because she just hasn't got that much uh love lovability screen time like Aerith is all in your face like your your ride or die your best friend super sweet super lovable um she's saving the day she's saving cloud um and tifa's just kind of there like I, I feel like they maybe have given tifa the short end of the stick in this because she hasn't won me over other than her looks obviously she looks great right but other than her looks like she really hasn't won me over as an uneducated gamer, as someone who didn't play the original, I'm just like, yeah, she's cool. You know, she's whatever. I feel like she hasn't had as many voice lines. I feel like she hasn't had as many powerful moments as Aerith has. Um, so that, I mean, that may be unfair to her. Uh, what do you guys think about that? It's funny you say you don't think she's had as many voice lines because uh, I did do a little 
little digging and a little research on the number of lines each character oh, has. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And uh, Tifa and Aerith, in, uh, specifically in Rebirth, Aerith has 11 more spoken dialogue, spoken lines than uh, Tifa does. It Not including any optional content. Like, you know how you can optionally talk to the character sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did do that. So she has 11 more. And then in Remake, Tifa actually has more lines than Aerith. Mm. And uh, I equate that probably to Tifa's introduced a lot earlier in the game. Yeah, than Aerith. In, in Remake, yeah. Yeah. I just love that you look that up. Like Sean's bringing the receipts. What made you decide that you wanted to to look up the count of the voice lines? Uh, I was really bored at work on Friday <laughs> during the prep period. Um, so yeah, I was really bored at work during my prep. I had nothing to do, nothing to grade. Uh, the people I usually hang out with had like an, had a team meeting, so I was just chilling in my room. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do some research on on this. Um, oh, oh, I was gonna jump to a completely different subject, but I'll, I'll, we we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Yeah, let's keep it structured a little bit. All right. So, best girl, let's just go around the horn real quick. Let's put in our votes. Gun to your head. Who's the best girl? For me, it's Aerith. For me, it's not even fucking close by far and away. But obviously, I think you guys might feel different. Hodge, gun to your head. Best girl is who? Tifa. Tifa. Is it how close is it for you? For me, it's not. It's close because I do love Aerith, but just through as this game went on, you could see how much Tifa loved Cloud, whereas mm -hmm. Aerith so often was just like, I because there's the scene in Gun uh, Gungaga where she meets his parents, and she, the whole time she's like, like they're out. I think she's there outside, and Tifa's like, "Oh, do you still like love Zach or whatever?" And she's basically like, "Yeah, like I still want to find Zach." And so to me, Cloud always felt like a consolation prize. Like if you're, if we're not talking about being with Cloud, I could see the air argument for Aerith. She seems to be the much more caring one, the one who would take care of you, the innocent one. But and where Tifa's just like a badass girlfriend you'd want to, you know, date. But in terms of in a relationship with Cloud, Tifa just seems to be there for Cloud more than Aerith does. Okay, so I gotta go Tifa. Fair enough. So you're going Tifa. And then how about you, Sean? Uh, I think you said Tifa, but take it away. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I like Tifa a lot. Um, you know, she was, I really liked her in the original game as a kid. Um, I, I like her even more what they've done in Remake and Rebirth. I, I think overall she's she's a wider range of, um, I think she's a much wider personality than Aerith. I think Aerith, Aerith is great. She grew on me a lot, but uh, I definitely agree with Hodge. I think she, I, I just think she is, she's more like depth of knowledge and the way she, she she just seems so cool she's like a cool character she really does care about cloud and i i think to the point where she even knows that it would probably bother cloud if she told tells him hey um she didn't know that he was at the nibelheim like that during the fire she had no idea he was there because he was in the soldier outfit but mm -hmm. cloud thinks he was what zach was when he when you know what I, you know what i'm talking about and i think tifa really cares about him and he she doesn't say that to him because i think she knows that it would bother him i don't know i think that, that goes a long way for me mm -hmm. i think mean, she I, I think she really cares about cloud I, I i like the way she fights too i like her mannerism she's looking out for everyone um especially in remake um she's you know in remake she is very trepidatious about um going to bomb the reactors she's really worried about the outcome it's going to mm -hmm. have on the yeah. citizens of midgar and specifically sector seven and all the different sectors um, but she goes along with it because she's ride or die for Barrett. And it's funny that you said, Hodge, you thought she was married to Barrett for all, like, a long time. I did too. I could definitely, game. <laughs> yeah, I, I could I could see why you would think that um, just because she's so gung ho. But I think it goes far to show her about like her her personality. I, th I think she was doing that for Marlene because she knew that like without Barrett, Marlene would fall apart. So I think mm -hmm. she was so gung ho to be with Barrett, make sure he's safe. He's got to say he's got to stay safe. And if I'm not there, he's not going to be safe that because if he if anything happens to him, what's going to happen to Marlene? So I think that goes a long way for Tifa. Yeah. OK, so you're picking Tifa. How is it close at all or no? I mean, no, no. OK, <laughs> but you're with me. You're with me. It's not even close, but on the I mean, it's not scale. That, but I like them all. Like they're all great. Characters. Yeah, they're all great. We're going to do I, I have a fun game that we're going to do at the end that I haven't told you guys about. So uh, you'll see where we're going to kind of rate uh, each character and average the scores just for fun um but we're gonna do that at the end but uh okay so there's that so we've gone over a, a bit about the ending and we've gone over best girl um why don't we go ahead why don't we talk about the gameplay the combat let's talk about the combat shall we can i say oh, one more thing about the end please yeah take it away with the epilogue 
I but I know I know neither of you guys played First Soldier, the mobile game. No. No. Okay. Well, there's a character that appears named Glenn. Um, you know in the scene when um Rufus Shinra when they're in Shinra's uh, Rufus's office. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah. guy, the hooded figure. Yeah, that that, that guy's named Glenn. Okay. Um, he's from First Soldier. And um that alludes to a lot of oh. yeah, so it if you know any backstory for him, it, he has a lot to do with Sephiroth. So he is in cahoots with Sephiroth. That's all I'm gonna say. I was wondering what was up with him. I was like, yeah. is this something from the older game that I missed? Because I didn't know who he was. Apparently That's Rufus it. shot him in the back, and apparently he's some kind of leader of Wu Tai or whatever, but I don't know mm-hmm. who the fuck he is. And also mm-hmm. apparently at the end we saw there he's also like part Sephiroth himself. Um, yeah, he's he's in cahoots so. with Sephiroth, so um, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I was like I was like, did I forget something from seven? I don't know who the hell this guy is. Looks like he's part of organization thirteen or something. I had no idea who he was and yeah, okay, that explains why. Because yeah, I'd yeah, never played that. Yeah, he's from the mobile. Yeah, I was I was a nerd and played that mobile game. Even <laughs> I, I played played like three mobile games in my life and they're all related to either Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts. So <laughs> okay. there you go. All right. So we we good on the ending for the moment? Yeah, I just want to right. mention that. Yeah. All right, so I, I think why don't we go ahead and talk about some of the actual gameplay a little bit here. Um, why don't we talk about the combat and the characters and ha- how they relate to the combat themselves? Like, um, what were we thinking about the combat? Who did we really enjoy playing with? What abilities and stuff like that? Was it an upgrade over um, Remake? Um, Hodge, when are you going to take it away with this first? It was a huge upgrade. I honestly forgot that a lot of people were saying, like, oh, it's so much better than Remake's combat. And I remember it being really clean but i do remember playing the yuffie dlc in remake and finding yuffie so fun to play with i'm like this is way better than remakes uh com uh combat uh but yeah it's it's so smooth in this game it's yeah i don't i wonder what the classic mode of of it would have been like i've never tried it because i like the action part of it but yeah it's really smooth my party was always if i could it was always um barrett yuffie cloud that was always my three that i went with because i liked having the distance at slat like cloud for the nice up close beat em up and then also barrett was a cheat code with uh if you use bonus round you could stagger people so easily so i always used that because it was so helpful especially when fighting odin which is the one i was talking i very quickly like hinted at it i don't know if it was in discord or on the podcast where i was like you need barrett to stagger someone because when you fight odin he has that undodgeable attack that if yeah. you don't stagger him he slaughters you in one hit yep. so that's why i had i switched barrett and i kept him in my party ever since then um but yeah that's why i was played with that was always the most fun tifa was honestly my least favorite combat because she was so kind of up close and you had to land those punches whereas cloud you're kind of you have a little distance because you can lunge with the sword where tifa you had to be right next to him punching and kicking him um then red 13s was really fun I was really sad you couldn't play as Vincent, but I'm assuming you'll be able to in the third one. Yeah, I, at, at least I really hope so because Vincent Valentine is one of my favorite characters of all time. Um, and uh, think, oh, and then obviously playing as Zach and even Sephiroth was really fun. But yeah, that was my party. And then Odin was my go-to summon because he was him and Alexander were so OP that I always use them for summons. But yeah, that's the gameplay was it, so much fun. But yeah, okay. All right, Sean, how about you? Oh yeah, gameplay's gameplay's fantastic. I, I think I think remakes combat was great, but this is definitely an upgrade over remakes combat. Mm-hmm. Um, Hodge, my go-to party, very similar to yours, except I replaced Yuffie with Tifa, so I'm like the OG party mm-hmm. right there. I got Cloud, there Tifa, go. and Barrett, <laughs> and um, I I totally agree with you. Barrett's um bonus round complete completely cheat code completely. It is oh, yeah. so I started I started my hard mode playthrough yesterday, mm-hmm. and it comes in the clutch so much. Nice. In hard mode um i my favorite character to use personally is cloud i just love cloud's gameplay i love the the addition of when you're far away and you and you um swipe with a sword and like the the wind like the blade comes out it's almost it looks Mm -hmm. like a wind blade but it's not wind but um yeah yeah i really like that and i actually love using tifa i think she's awesome i think those those punches that brings that pressure gauge just goes up and up the stagger meter goes Mm -hmm. up and up it goes so fast and i love when the enemy is staggered where um you know you hit triangle with her you can um make the damage boost go like up too so i love that um i like her abilities um what do you guys think of the synergy abilities too that was really i like that addition too with the synergy Mm -hmm. where you have two characters do like a almost like an animated move together i really like those some of those are really good 
Uh, what do you guys think of those? Uh, Hodge. You can All right, so you okay, go. yeah, so I, I'll just talk about so the synergy abilities were really cool. Um, I didn't use them as much as I probably should have, but like in boss fights, sometimes I would break out those synergy moves. Um, and they did a lot of damage too, especially if you uh spec into the skill tree. Some of the skill tree items were like to increase uh synergy damage. Um, so yeah, they, they were really cool cinematic and they did good damage. Um, as far as uh the combat goes, I thought the combat was amazing. I think this is like perfect JRPG combat. Um, I would I wouldn't mind if almost every Final Fantasy game going forward kind of takes this combat. <laughs> uh, maybe make some small tweaks here and there, but I think this is just it's so dialed in, it's so perfect. Um, I I mentioned before that my uh, my dude from remake was Barrett. I loved Barrett. I was a Barrett main, but really Barrett took a back seat in this one um, uh, to mm -hmm. Yuffie. Yuffie was my girl. I love Yuffie. Um, anytime I could, Yuffie was my leader. You know, you pick your leader of the party. Um, because I just loved her combat so much. Like, she's so fun. Um, I had, like, this build where I would use the plasma discharge skill so that every time you fill up an ATB gauge, there would be this big electric explosion around your character, um, which would do damage and kind of stun the enemies a little bit. Um, so I would pop that out. Um, and then I had, like, uh, I was throwing out the little windstorm ability. I was throwing out the elemental jutsus where, like, you could use fire or cold attacks, etc. Um, you know, assess the enemy, see what they're weak to, pop her elemental jutsu, get in their face. Um, also, so my main party, like if, if, you, if you could pick anybody, I think we'll go around the horn. This will be fun. Let's say you're coming up to a boss. You have access to the entire party, right? Um, my main three that I would always pick if I could is Cloud. So I got Cloud and I had the materia, the provoke materia on him. He's kind of my tank. Um, he's there to just do damage, be awesome, and kind of draw the enemy if needed. Um, then I had Aerith was my support. Um, I got Aerith cranked up with as much magic attack damage as possible. Um, I had auto cast and heal on there so that she could pop heals as needed. Um, and then also, this was the big thing. I got the Comet Materia later on, which is like the biggest spell that I could find, I think, in the game. The Comet Materia and the Synergy Materia that you get later on, um, on Aerith. So what was so amazing, I'm playing as Yuffie. She's filling up her ATB gauge so fast. At, every time she fills up her ATB gauge, there's this big plasma spark that does a bunch of lightning damage to the enemy. I'm all up in the enemy's face. I'm hitting him with elemental weak damage because of her elemental jutsu. And then every time I fill up an ATB gauge, I'm either using the mug ability to get in their face and steal an item, or I'm doing throwing out the windstorm. Um, and every time you do that, anytime you use an ability like the windstorm or the mug or whatever, Aerith automatically starts casting Comet because you have the Comet synergy thing um, for free. It doesn't use any MP. So she's nonstop spamming Comet with max. Uh, Ma magic damage while i'm in the enemy's face static shock bursting people beating the shit out of them and cloud's doing his thing with his provoke and his sword stuff and i just found that this team was so good like we just steamrolled and, and demolished the the vast majority of enemies with that team so that's that's my that's my uh my three let's go around let me ask you guys that first of all if you want to comment about what i just said feel free but also what is your three and what is your strategy if you can pick from anybody and there's a tough boss coming up sean oh uh, i i had said it before i i always went with cloud barrett and tifa anytime i had access to everyone it would always be cloud barrett and tifa um and usually i'd be controlling cloud but i did you know i would switch to barrett oftentimes when the you know sometimes when the boss would like go high or mm -hmm. um, climb on the walls sometimes with some of the bosses. I would switch to Barret, and then once I pressured an enemy, I would switch right to Tifa and go right up there and just start punching them, and punching them, and punching them to just get that pressure gauge up. Because my whole goal is I just want to stagger as much as possible. Um, and I had to I, I assess every single enemy I come across. Me too. Yep. Always, mm -hmm. always. Because that that that's like that's the perfect amount. Um, one character that I did kind of use as well was I did use Kate Sith a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, very like very different character than any of them. Um, mm -hmm. often very strange with his, you know, like his like a uh, microphone, basically a megaphone, I guess. Um, but he has an ability. I forget what I, I should have wrote it down. I forget what it's called. But he can jump on the Moogle. Yeah. And he like sm um smacks down with a Moogle, but then his gauge immediately fills back up. So you can just keep doing it as long as you're hitting enemies. And that sure. was pretty cool. 
So yeah, I use him. I never use him for a boss fight though, except for obviously in the last boss fight when you have to use him. But other than that, I would never use him for a boss fight. He's more of a just like, oh, I'm just messing around, fighting enemies. Maybe I'll go to the Coliseum and use him a little bit. Um, Yuffie, I'm not wasn't a big fan of Yuffie. Um, I I didn't really oh, like man. her in Integrate either. Um, <sighs> I can't get into. Like, did you? Sorry. No, did you on. just did you just not really learn how her combat works and how it flows with the elemental jitsus and the juggling? Because no, like, once I, you I learn it, it out, it's so effective. Yeah. I figured it out with the juggling. It just it didn't it doesn't fit the way I like to play games, like my style of game. Uh, I do think it's cool how you can switch the elemental though on the jujitsu though. And um, I did use it like well, you know the part where you have to, which I think it's um, chapter six when you're like mandated mandatory maybe it's chapter seven when you have to take over as her um, mm, and you have yeah. to use her. That I I kind of started learning a little bit more with her, and I kind of was like, all right, I can I could see me myself using her, but I preferred every other character to her. And honestly, her and Aerith were my two least used characters. Red Thirteen was awesome. That's funny. Yeah, oh, Red Red was Red, was really Red. oh my gosh, going into vengeance mode with him. Oh yeah, Red Thirteen takes was awesome. down enemies. But yeah, so I, I would say Barrett, Cloud, and Tifa. I yeah, actually I for I forget that Kate Sith is a character because I never used him unless it was a mandatory thing. But I do have to say, I, I enjoyed how many times in this game it would force you to have like a certain party because it made you use everyone. Like you didn't just get, it's like, I don't know, catching a Pokemon and throwing them straight into the computer and never touching it again. Like it's, it's not that you like literally have to use each character at a certain point. And I really enjoyed that, but it was nice that, for most of the game, you're able to set your own party and do that. Mm -hmm. I actually used Aerith for a long time, and then un until I started using just the cheat cut of the Barrett stagger, because my, I don't know, Aerith was always so weak to me, and I just used her as a healer. So I, I was like, yeah, it seemed kind of like a waste of a party member for me. So after a while, I stopped using her. Yeah, I, I do want to give Tifa some love here because I, you know, I was hating on Tifa a little bit, and I like Tifa. I just like Aerith more. But in regards to the combat, I, I did enjoy Tifa's combat, um, especially towards the later game when I got a little bit better with her. Um, she was, as Sean said, she was really good at filling up that stagger gauge. Um, like at the very end, when you're fighting Sephiroth, there's like this one hard mode where he's got like the two wings and the core, um, and like it was that was a pain in the ass, first of all. But it was really hard to uh, to damage that core because it was so resistive. But I actually found the cheat code for that for me was Tifa. Um, I just got right in the core's face. I destroyed one of the wings. I didn't even destroy the second wing because for some reason it kept dodging my. It was dodging like my frost spells because it was moving, which was annoying. But um. I ended, I just got in the core's face with Tifa and I was just doing like her uppercut um, combo, doing the uppercut and then the dive kick. Like you just kind of chain it together. She's up in the air with the uppercut and then you instantly do the dive kick to come down on him and just keep repeating that over and over. And it was just chunking his, his health and the stagger bar. Um, and that's how I ended up beating the core. Like she was really good with that combo and her damage. Um, so shout out to Tifa for that. Um, that dive kick might be my most used ability in the game. I use that so much with her, and she fills the ATB meter so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it just goes so fast with her. So I use that so much. I would even if I'm not playing her, I would just stop going to the like the, you know the little active combat menu. And I would use it so much. I had the auto um auto like the auto combo combo thing for her equipped for materia, mm -hmm. so she would use it all the time. I like her dive kick too. Her dive like you know the one where it's like the um die kick goes sideways i really like that too yeah, yeah just it was overall I, all the characters are great to play as it you know they at really some are. Point. yeah mm -hmm. they all offer like value now sean you mentioned that you were you're going to be playing it on hard because i assume you're going for that platinum yeah um, which i'm not because i'm scared and intimidated it's too much um so with hard as i understand it you can't use items in combat can you use Correct. them outside of combat you can use them outside, but you can't use them okay. in combat. Yeah. And you also don't refill your MP when you rest, which is Correct. crazy. Except unless you unless you rest at an inn. Okay. So a, a piece of advice that I'm gonna give you, Sean, because hard is gonna be really hard. Something that might help you, you might want to just give this a try. Um, put Aerith on the max magical damage, like I said. Give her that synergy materia and the comet materia. And anytime you fill up and use a dive kick, every time you dive kick with with Tifa. Aerith is going to cast Comet, and it's not going to use any MP. And it's just going to do crazy damage. It's going to be pretty awesome. That might help you with some of the hard boss fights. Give that a shot if you want. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. All right, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll probably do that. I'm in Chapter 2 now. Just, you know, just... Have you guys... Um, 
why don't, why don't we segue into side quests? Talk Let's about some of the side quests. Let's do it. Um, Hell yeah. Take it so away, Sean. I've done every side quest that I could do already. So like, I don't have to do any in my hard mode playthrough because I was not, I'm like, I'm not doing these in hard mode because <laughs> I just want to play the regular game. It's already going to be challenging enough. Um, did you guys have any like, did you i really enjoyed all the different chocobo side quests that they had and i'm not the biggest chocobo guy like i love final fantasy but it's it, that's one of the things i'm not a big fan of is chocobos but i really liked how each region had like their distinct um you know chocobo quest and uh specifically um they make alludes to chocobo sam from remake and you learn a little bit more about him um and like his backstory and how he kind of was more of like you know i'm like I got to do what I got to do for myself. What do you mm. guys think? Yeah, let's make this. Uh, I- I'm going to let you go in just one second, Hodge. Um, let's, yeah, let's make this the side quest and the side content in general discussion. Um, Hodge, go ahead. Um, the Chocobo stuff. Yeah, I didn't. There's There wasn't a side mission that I d- didn't like. The the scanning the rock where it was just hit the same three button three times. Or oh, the, the same triangle. button three times. Yeah, yeah that one was kind of like just tell me that i'm here and it's done i don't need to hit like, triangle hold, three times hold down the button like they should just made it hold down the button yeah it was it was that was kind of dumb but th- like the majority of it i didn't i didn't hate the only only side missions i didn't like were the 3d brawler one because i was just not good at it when you had to fight the super party guy or whatever the shinra Dio. middle manager oh shinra this, middle manager. Yeah, the, the middle manager guy he was so freaking hard to fight <laughs> i hate Dio wasn't that bad but because he had he had six moves instead of dio's four so you had to just remember two more things that you had to dodge or whatever and i hated it but uh and then the chicken one but i like how the chicken one ended where it's like you think you're gonna have to guide a chicken for like a mile and then instead an enemy shows up you fight you're like oh thank god i don't have to do this stupid fucking chicken thing anymore yeah, but it uh runs, it runs on its own it's like oh yeah i gotta get home and then the, I I loved mostly just because of the music, the two dog missions where it's like bow wow wow bow wow wow that music that was playing. It was so stupid. I loved it. But uh or the frog mission at uh Junon, that was hilarious. Oh my gosh. Uh <laughs> having to do like the fall guys, like stay on the platform, don't get knocked off thing. That was always fun. I was thinking Frogger. Frogger, yeah, because that that's like literally a thing in uh in I'm sure it's been in other games, but it's like in Fall Guys where there's two things that are t- constantly spinning after you either jump or do- uh duck under them. But yeah, those those were really fun. But yeah, the side missions, I love the open world part of it. Like I never like I've I've always been a collectathon person as a kid who grew up loving Spyro, where it's like find every gem. Like that's basically the game in, at the end. I always loved that open world. Uh, even though it's like the Ubisoft, like find a, a place to stand and then it opens up wherever it shows you where everything is like, that's kind of, all right, that's Ubisoft. But, um, I loved doing all the side missions and side quests and especially the side missions where it would improve your relationship with a character. Cause by the end of the game, I had full on every single person. Like I always did the optional, I, I liked how to increase Yuffie's. You had to be sarcastic with her and she believed it. Like <laughs> just stupid things like that, where I think it's at the beach. She's like, Oh, Oh, I look great, don't I? And he goes, "Yeah, sure." She goes, "I knew it." And she like goes away, and she gets happier. Like <laughs> it's like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I always loved it. I didn't, I did not try to get the S on every piano thing. That was difficult. I could not do it, even though I'm a musically inclined person. I'm like, I'm just sitting there like trying to do the joysticks. Like, uh, crap, which way does this go? <laughs> like kind of thing. But yeah, I loved, I loved all the side content other than those two uh, missions. But yeah, it was so much. Uh, I mean, obviously, we'll get to Queen's Blood. We can make that its own freaking thing. But yeah, I, I loved, I loved it all. Okay. Uh, for me, yeah, for the side content, um, I didn't do all of it. Um, I didn't 100 percent this game. I'm not going for the platinum. Um, like when we started out in the grasslands, I did almost like 100 percent the grasslands, and I was enjoying it. Um, but as I got further into the game, this is a long game. Um, I started feeling like it felt a little bit bloated for me personally. Um, I didn't enjoy the open world as much as uh, some other people, as much as Hodge. Like I felt like the open world just felt like filler. Um, like a lot of the missions were very same-ish. Uh, it wasn't very unique. Like there was literally two missions where you literally just go up and scan a rock. Two different mm-hmm. ones. There was the one with the materia, uh, like with the, the boss materia or whatever. You scan the rock and then you have to do the sequence. And then there's the other one where you scan the rock and then you just have to hit triangle three times. It's like the exact same thing with just a different quick time event. Um, and then the towers were stupid as hell. Like there was no point to it. There wasn't even a, a difficulty. It wasn't like in Far Cry. Like in Far Cry, 
uh, there's like a, a, pu uh, a climbing puzzle a lot of the time. Like you have to figure out how to climb up the towers. There's a little bit different path and, and different ways that you get up there sometimes. This was just, pr for the most part, this was pretty much just straightforward climb up the tower and hit triangle and that was it so i thought this felt really fillerish and i actually feel like from my perspective the game would have been a little bit better if the open world was a little bit smaller with less content in it because i think that would allow people to have more time to do all of the side stories the side quests um, without feeling like they're there for 100 plus hours um, like if the game was just a little bit more compacted um, I think people would have done more of the side quests because they wouldn't feel so strapped for time. Um, and, you know, the main story was epic, as we know. Um, I think it would have been an overall tighter and better product if there was just less of the Ubisoft open world and just uh, just more time, like I said, more time to focus on the main story and the side missions and not so much run around a giant mountainous map and and interact with quick time events. You know what I mean? But that's just my opinion. Um, I thought that brought it down a little bit, but overall, fantastic. Um, Sean, what well, do you that, think? that's the that's the beauty of like open world games. Though, is like you don't have to do everything. That's like that's the beauty part of it. Um, particularly another side quest I just want to shout out is the Seaside Inside quest with Johnny. Mm -hmm. And he's all he all those clones, and you're running <laughs> around trying to figure um trying to help out Johnny get that Seaside in. One thing that I actually I still have not done though is um you know how you can upgrade the seaside in with the, the stars by giving them all the different i have not gotten all of them yet i will be doing that but oh that gosh. is probably going to take a while oh, because yeah. you have to grind in gold saucer for a lot of those um you know points to unlock the little trophies and the little statues and all that so that, that's going to take me a while but um speaking of some side content gold saucer phenomenal some of those yep. i know you, hodge you're not a big fan of the 3d brawler I actually really liked it. It grew on me. At first, I was so thrown off when you get just thrown into the fight with Dio. I'm like, what's going on right now? Yeah. I actually, I actually was about to lose, and I hit restart checkpoint. And I ended up the last checkpoint I had was like, like an hour or two behind it, and I was so, I was so upset with myself. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I got back up there. I did beat him though, but um, it did grow on me. It, it grew on me. Um, I like the Queen's Blood in um, Gold Saucer. How it like gives you scenarios. And it's like, oh, you have to do this. And they give you like cards and it's like, you have to figure out how to do this. Um, I Is really it the, like that. Was it the same? Because they also had that at Costa del Sol down on the yeah. beach. You could do that same thing. Were they the same ones or was it no, two different? they're different. They're okay. different. Yeah, okay. they were different. I like that. Uh, Chocobo Racing, um, it was all right. I, like I said, I'm not the biggest Chocobo guy. Yeah. Um, Once you got in first, you were in first. There was, It really wasn't that challenging. <laughs> uh, did you, did it you do the Gold Cup? Did you do the Gold Cup? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, for the gold cup, I, I really, I got there. I'm in chapter 12. I'm in, uh, the gold saucer. I was like, I'm going to get gold in the Chocobo league. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. So I go up there and you have to do so many races and they weren't hard at all. I got first place in all of them. I got first place in like five races straight. So I was in like silver or something. And I was just like, I'm bored. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do another 10 races to get gold. So I just left. I was like, this is good enough for me. Um, it, cause it wasn't hard at all, but it was decent. It was pretty fun. Um, for like a short diversion, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of Costa de Sol too, uh, the shooting game, like the, uh, mm. with the, the gun, with like, basically like target practice. I, I, I found that pretty fun. It was just like a nice little change of pace. <laughs> I wasn't good at first. And then I, I kept playing it and I'm like, all right, I, I'm good. And then, I, I didn't realize uh, for the first few times you could turn the um like the your the like, sensitivity um, the sensitivity up. I'm like oh yeah. once I did that I'm like oh my god this makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You had your little um Rocket League clone game with Red Thirteen. That one was fun. The soccer ball. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. pretty fun. I, I enjoyed that. Um. Yeah. I I think some of the mini games are really good. Did you guys like the sit up challenge? The sit up challenge was cool. Yeah. It confused me because I thought you're supposed to go at the same pace. I didn't realize you could increase it. So I kept losing. I'm like, what does go? And then I realized you have to just hit that tempo, but it just gets faster and faster. Yeah. And then I, then I was like, oh, now I whooped her ass. But yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Um, one thing that I really liked and I was upset that there wasn't more of it in this game was. Um, what's that what's that mini fort game condor called? fort condor yeah like when you're <laughs> when you were just thrown into that game of fort condor you kind of get like shrunk into you're like these little uh ps2 style renders of the characters and you're playing fort condor that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun 
Um, in my opinion, Fort Condor was way better than Queen's Blood, and I wish that there was more option to play Fort Condor because, like, there wasn't even Fort Condor in the Golden Saucer. Like, when you go to that area where you have like all the different games, there's like three or four different games, but there was no Fort Condor. Like, I'm what, actually what's up surprised with that? at that too. Yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah, in was... in, uh, in Integrate, it's uh, like it's like a game everyone plays. It's like a yeah, Queen's Blood in I that game. It. So I yeah. would assume it would be that kind of popular thing too. Yeah. And I thought it was even better in this version. I don't know. I had more fun in this game than I did on, in Intergrade. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, I uh, think it. I, I think it was easier in this game for um, mm -hmm. for Condor. It but was. that might be because there wasn't as many to choose from. Like I know in Integrate, it took me. A, that was the last thing I did in Integrate was getting all the Fort Condor. But I think because there were so many of them, it was just more difficult. Um, but yeah, I I did like Fort Condor, and I'm not like I was not the big Fort Condor guy like ever. Like, I didn't like it that much. And like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of an integrate, but this was pretty cool. I love what they look like, the sprites. Like, I yeah, love that. Too. I would love if they could remake, just, like, not like remake, but like re release the original game. Like, just keep the original game the way it is in that art style. I think that'd be so cool. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we want, is there anything else we want to talk about on side quests or open world before we switch to Queen's Blood? Uh, I think. Uh, one thing I'll say that was kind of annoying is uh, when you were in, Co I think, Cosmo Canyon and you're trying to get the Chocobo or whatever, or you had oh to do God. those, you had to do those floating ring things. Um, not, not getting the Chocobo itself. That wasn't too bad. I don't think, but those stupid races or whatever, where you had to, you had to get so many points going through the rings. Those yeah. were a pain in the ass. And there was one that I had to restart like 12 times and I was getting was very the, angry. The it was the second one. It had to be yeah. the second one. I think it was one. the second one, yeah. yeah. So when I was at that point, I remember I posted in Discord, I go, this is probably the my only huge gripe with this game is the gliding slash flying mechanic with the Chocobo Sucks. is horrendous. It is so bad. Once yeah. you figure it out, it's not that bad. It's just because it's the same gliding technique as in the Arkham games where you have to dive and give yourself the momentum to go back up. And that is I, true, didn't know, yeah. I didn't know that at first because I kept I was like, wait, do I go down or do I go? I, I thought it was like a choice of which way you go. But then I found out, no, you have to dive to get back up to those ones up there. And so I, I aced them all like once I figured that part out. But I can understand there was one. I think it was that second one. That is the one I did have to restart the most. But it, eventually I was just like, oh, this isn't that bad <laughs> i spent okay. a solid 30 minutes on that second one i was like i'm like did they, yeah. they have like the 500s like it's going down and up and then there's like 100s over there i'm like do i just skip this section or am i supposed to go over there so i can hit the fan <laughs> i kept missing the fan after like the first yeah. section i would miss yep. the fan and i'm like do i just skip this section and go right to the fan yeah, I was, I was, I was so pissed. I was like, "Man, this thing, man, this is annoying." <laughs> I finally beat it, though. I was happy when I was done oh, I was, with it. I was um, so pumped when I cleared it. I was. There are. It. Sorry, there actually are a couple more things I want to talk about before we get to Queen's Blood for the okay. open world. Um, let's talk about the proto relic. Um, I didn't get it. Um, I did. I did a lot of the proto relic missions, but I didn't do all of them. Did uh, Did any of you guys fully complete the proto relic? And yeah. what do you, What do you actually get? Like, what's the reward, and how cool is it? You get Gilgamesh as a summon. The swordsman, you get him as a summon. Mm. Yeah, it's it's hard though because the final stage, you go to like this little hidden island and you have to fight two summons at once. And one of them is Odin and Alexander. And that one was so hard. Even on easy mode, that one was so hard. I had to summon Odin to fight Odin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that one was, was that was tough. Yeah, that one was really. I was playing on normal mode. Uh, I died there more than any other time in the game. Like I didn't really yeah. die a lot in the game, like going through it. And I played on normal the whole time, but there I probably died maybe six or seven times. I was like, Ugh. I kept having to yeah. do it. Almost, almost said, you know what? I'll just put this off for my hard mode playthrough and come back. Glad I didn't. Really <laughs> um, yeah. Did you have a particular Hodge and Midnight? Did you guys have a particular proto? I don't know how many you did Midnight, but particular like region where the proto relic was like your favorite like group of missions. I the really like the Condor one. one. I like the, like the Fort one. The Fort Condor one was my favorite. Yeah, the Fort Condor one was awesome, which actually I didn't even do all of them, which I should have. Even though I loved the Fort Condor, I didn't do all of those missions because it, some of them were like a pain in the ass for me to try to even figure out how to get to it. <laughs> like you had to navigate oh, yeah. the map in a specific way. And I was at a point where I was like, man, I got to like I, 
I got to beat this game because I got to get ready for the spoiler cast. I don't have time to be doing all the side stuff. I was I was up against the clock, I felt like. So I just, I didn't do all of them. I will say that uh, some of the quests were memorable. Like the very first one in the Grasslands where the you're grasslands, dealing with those, those yeah. idiots. You're dealing with those idiot bandits and you're chasing oh, them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very, it was very funny. Yeah. Let's get yeah. goofy. Here's the plan. You're the distraction. I get out of here. And he like, would yeah. make them like, <laughs> yeah, he, he just like run away. It's like, dude, what are you doing? And then somehow uh, they would survive though. And like, they'd be back with them. Like, like nothing happened. No, oh, those yeah. dudes were funny. They're like playing dead and stuff. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, yeah. See, at first, I thought those were going to be all the proto relic missions for all of them. So, like, when I got to uh, Junon, I'm like, oh, it's not, they're not here. I'm like, okay, so it's going to be different for all of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that was a nice throwback to Remake. I did like them in Remake. Yeah, that was cool. That was funny because yeah. you met those guys in Remake in like the little train subway area they, or whatever. They just would keep appearing and you fought them in the Coliseum. <laughs> those yeah. dudes are they, funny. They, they yeah. think they're so tough. They're like, oh, I'm, um, oh, yeah, we're the best. <laughs> how, how about this here was another side content that i really enjoyed i bet you guys probably did too was the pirate king quest where you had to sail the seas and uh oh, did you yeah. guys do that you, you yeah, sailed I the did, sea yeah. you had to go to the four locations on the map you fight a boss at each one you get the little piece or whatever and at the yeah. end you end up getting like uh like a compass <laughs> a compass that shows you where those uh crafting materials are in the sea um, what do you craft with those i just picked them up but i never used them on anything <laughs> It's an item for um, transmuting or whatever, like high end gear. Oh, but I never did. I never did it either. I guess I didn't unlock those gears somehow. I haven't yeah. transmuted everything. I didn't really transmute that much so far. Obviously, I have a ton of material. I'm just, I'm just gonna eventually do it. Um, one, another side thing that, um, well, I was gonna comment on that was that eerily is similar to Kingdom Hearts three in Pirates of the Caribbean world when you're running run around the boat. <laughs> That's what I thought of the whole time. And I thought of uh, Wind Waker the entire time with a map. There you go. Um, All right. Yeah. I, need to Are, my, I need to replay Kingdom Hearts 3 soon. So good. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Are we satisfied with side content other than Queen's Blood? Yeah. yeah. Shall, we, shall we talk about Queen's Blood now? Yes, sir. All right. I didn't like it. So let me pass it to one of you guys to talk about what you liked about uh, Queen's Blood. Who, who, who wants to take it first? You go, right. Sean. Fight for it. Oh, I, I adored Queen's Blood, and I'm, I'm not a card game guy. I actually just started playing the Dragon Ball card game online. Shout out to the <laughs> online client. Um, spent too much money on that already. But uh, <laughs> I, never thought, I never thought I would like this. And I, like I said, I want a standalone Queen's Blood game. I would love this. Um, I just found it so addicting. Like, I loved, in Chapter 5, the tournament. Like, absolutely loved that. Like, was so... I was like, okay, let's go. Didn't lose one game in the tournament. But if you did lose, like, when you were playing someone, it was so easy if you knew you were going to lose to just pause it and restart. Just hit restart. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so many... Like, all the abilities all the different cards have, you can form your deck in so many different ways. Um, I thought it was really cool on... Well, talking about Queen's Love, going back to Gold Saucer, and one of the one of the challenges, they flip you to the other side. So you're playing from the other side perspective like yeah how you always, you always start on the left but yeah this time you, start, you start on the right and i was like what like it totally and at first i didn't realize it so i'm like oh i'll be fine i went in there i'm like well none of my cards really work now yeah so i'm kind of screwed um but i i liked all the different cards you know shout out to just the, the standard soldier card that like would uh it has like the four it's like that it's like a it's like a plus sign yeah so i always have two of those in my deck um yeah some of the cards are just really good some of them are um really cool like shout out to the cactar where it gives you the plus three and like mm -hmm. a yep. in the corner down there i that was always in my deck um when i got the dio card i used dio a lot um i, I yeah. loved it i always used um i can't remember what it's called like the serpent that every time someone died it got it gained a power oh, so yeah. i put that guy in there all he was always just chilling in the back so every time someone died he powered up and i think i would also have the chocobo because if another card powered up that would power up also so every yep. time someone died he powered up and then my chocobo powered up and yeah it was so cool just finding the strategy of just like having the person you put down to either add one or two you know pawns to the next things to put stuff down and then someone to power up another guy you have on your team it was it was such a fun like because yeah when it when i first started it i was like god i hate this why do i have to do this but then once you kind of get the strategy down you're like oh this is actually really because it's like 
it's, you know, chess, both the card, you know, kind of thing. And it was, I thought it was a whole lot of fun. I'd always have like, or the, the, I think it's a baby chocobo where if you win that thing, you gain three of points also yep. like that. And yeah. I always had stuff like that in my, uh, thing or the one, it would be just like one that just like, I think it's like the flame troop or something that kills someone that's like two spots over. And so that would be great when you had the serpent out and the choke, like, it was, it was just so fun strategizing how to like make your team as powerful as possible. And yeah, I, I love, I loved queen's blood in the end. Uh, every time it would pop up in the map, I'm like, yes, a couple more matches. <laughs> the, the first thing I would always do when I got to a region, like playing queen's blood, first mm -hmm. thing I'm doing, no matter what. Yeah. I also like the cards that you can play over your older cards. So yeah like if, if if they had so it looks like the enemy has these three rows spots already because you you know five per row you have mm. two two down and they already have three left you can just play your card right over it and take one of them right back yeah i really like those cards too overall i liked it i like the little story behind it the queen's blood story oh yeah it was so cool like every time you be basically like a boss you'd see the yeah. guy and you're like what's going on like yeah. this dude's being haunted by the cards and stuff and then you and uh, well i guess i was gonna say spoiler we're in a spoiler cast so it's obvious uh at the end when you actually have to play the ghost of the guy and mm -hmm. it was yeah that was at the haunted hotel at the gold saucer yeah. that was so much so much fun i it was did. hoping I was hoping that he was a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging. I beat yeah, him I beat him. Drive. I didn't even have to restart. I just beat him. No. Yeah, it I'm was like, all right. Yeah, it got. I it think... did get to the point where I wasn't dying anymore, though, which was nice. I was just starting to whoop people. <laughs> it felt great. <laughs> okay, so that was Queen's Blood. Are we satisfied with that? I like. I said I didn't enjoy it. Um, I think for me, what it was is that I was just feeling like the game was was too big, and I was I didn't have enough time to experience everything. So I was like, I just want to get to the story because there was just too much to do i spent 67 hours uh to beat the game and i know people have spent a lot more time than that uh than me but oh, yeah, i right? didn't i did some of the queen's blood i did do the tournament obviously i won the tournament that was fun i did do some of the side ones where you're in a town and you beat the people in the town and it was okay but i just i never really got too into it and i didn't feel like doing 100 percent of it personally but yeah. One last thing I want to say about Queen's Blood is some of the opponents are hilarious too when you're talking to them. Um, like in the Dust Bowl, there's one of the guys in the bar, and he's like, he's trying to be like act all tough, and he's like, no, I gotta, I gotta be calm. I gotta be calm. You gotta be like, you, you just walked up to me and asked me if I wanted to play Queen's Blood. That's how I have to act. One of the guys <laughs> in the Dust Bowl, I get to play a dog. That was pretty cool. Yeah, the and then dog. They, make, they make reference to uh, what was the other animal? It was a, cho it was a chocobo. They make reference to, oh, yeah, I heard this is Chocobo that plays, too. My dog's going to beat him. Yeah, and then you play the Chocobo later. <laughs> yeah. That was funny uh, in the tournament when Red shows up, like, acting like he's a human oh my in the armor and stuff. That was hilarious. It reminded me of uh, live-action Scooby-Doo, when Scooby-Doo's on the plane. Or anytime <laughs> he dresses the girl. I know Hodge will remember. Oh, yeah, yeah I love that movie. Yeah. I love those uh -huh. movies. I love both of them, actually. But uh, the one thing before we move on, it's kind of – not really Queen's Blood related itself, but I I loved the game obviously. But it, the the parts where the game felt bloated to me wasn't the open world stuff. I think I said this on a different episode. It was actually where like you forced you were forced to do random shit in the story. Like you had to do the Coastal Soul, like find your swimsuit kind of thing. You had to do the Queen's Blood tournament, which I loved. Obviously, I love playing Queen's Blood, but it felt so weird that this game. It's just kind of, I mean, it's a JRPG, so they do that all the time where they just add random story elements. But that's the part where I felt the blow where it's like, I don't need to do that. I just want to get to where we're going and fight the next guy kind of thing. But I mean, I, I loved it all. But that's that's actually where I felt the blow, not the side stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've talked about, you know, the combat. We've talked about the side stuff and the stories in Queen's Blood. Um, let's go ahead and bring it back to the actual story of the game. Uh, we talked we talked in depth about the ending, but we didn't go into a lot of depth about the actual main story leading up to the ending. Um, so I want to take this time to just shout out any special moments in the story that really we really enjoyed or that captivated us or were emotional. Um, I'll go ahead. And I guess I'll start here because I feel like I haven't been talking as much during the Queen's Blood and everything. Um, so there were a couple big moments during the story that really resonated with me. Um, first of all, there was the the Barrett part. Uh, where Barrett oh fight, uh, ends up fighting his friend Dine. 
Um, oh. And that fight was very difficult, by the way. That was actually, I was playing on normal the whole time, but I, I kicked it down to easy for that fight because with that one-on-one -on -one Barrett versus Dine, he was kicking my ass. Like, he was destroying me, so I ended up having to go down to easy, but then I went back up to normal after that for most of the game. But, um, but that was very emotional. Unfortunately, you know, you had to defeat your friend and he dies. Um, and you find out that he's the father of uh, Marlene, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very emotional. Um, the Kate Sith thing where he betrays you uh, in the gold saucer, like he, he takes off. I'm like, this son of a bitch, I loved you. Um, but then yeah. he, he redeems himself in the end, though. Um, we find out that his motives were pure. Um, the reason why he did that was because he thought that the people who took that, uh, who took the relic to the temple would probably die. And he didn't want yeah. you guys to die. So that's why he did it. Um, and he shows up and kind of saves the day there too. Um, when the whole temple's collapsing, like he holds mm -hmm. up the thing. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was very cool and very powerful. So that's just a couple moments. I'll probably have more later, but let me pass it to you, Hodge. Uh, what were some of the key moments and emotional bits and things you want to talk about from the story? I am not a man. Like I'm not like a, I mean, I say, I'm a manly man. I never cry, but like, I'm not a dude who tears up very often, but that Barrett, part was that hit me so hard like because i never really knew that about marley i mean it makes sense he's you know he's black his daughter's white so it makes sense or half white uh but like finding out that he took mar like that barrett knows he screwed over his town like he thought he was going to help it but he ended up just destroying the town and when he thought dine was dead he just like put it on himself like i need to take care of his daughter like i can't just leave her here and so he takes care of marlene he loses his wife which in the trial part where he loses his wife again you're just torn apart and um yeah that the whole barrett part like ever like i said everyone gets their thing like you find out vincent's you know kind of thing kate says parts great yeah where everyone yeah he's like i knew this would happen but it still hurts just as bad or whatever he says and uh finding out you know you know tifa kind of through the going through the whale kind of seeing her past and all that like everyone has an amazing story in this but barrett's just that one was so heart-wrenching and good that i was just oh man i lost it after that i had like i even messaged everyone i'm like just everyone know chapter eight you're gonna cry <laughs> like kind of thing and that's what hit me the hardest uh but obviously the whole story overall, it's a great story. I, I love it from, I'm still confused about the whole multiverse part of it, but we'll probably, it'll wrap up in the next game. But for now I'm confused as hell about what's going on. But, uh, but yeah, the, it just, just, and then <laughs> funny finding out, I don't think this was ever in the originals where you find out red 13 kind of a kid when he gets back to Cosmo Canyon and his voice changes. You're like, Hey, what? <laughs> like, and he's like, he's like, I basically had to act like I'm older than I am or else he wouldn't have respected me kind of thing. Well, and, uh, what's he, what's, sorry, what's up? What's, I didn't play the original. Are they voiced in the original or are you just reading no, text? It's just text boxes. Okay. So that's why I, they, they, I don't ever remember them saying something of like, oh, your, your, your attitude's changed kind of thing. Like that never happens when you go to Cosmo Canyon. So, but I, so I thought that was kind of goofy. The trial bit with him, I wasn't as huge on. It just f kind of felt like, hey, he has a wall climbing commit mechanic. How do we utilize it? Like that kind of thing to me. But, uh, but yeah, it's, that's, it all goes back to the Barrett mission was or story was by far my favorite part of this game and that's what sticks out to me the most were there any other uh moments uh that were really resonant or emotional with you besides that i really liked actually in the cosmic canyon when it's Aerith giving her speech and it cuts over to cloud and it's like either smile at her uh tell her to wrap it up or like nod or whatever it was i think i just did a smile which would actually end up being funny because he does like this really awkward like like he doesn't know how to smile kind of thing. And, but, Aer but Aerith is so sweet that she knows he's really trying to encourage her. And I thought that moment was really sweet too. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of moments in this game that are, and then, or uh, this isn't really, well, we could, if we're going to talk about characters later, I'll bring it up later. But, uh, cause there's a side character of finding Sisney in this game was really cool, but no, go ahead and talk um, about it now. All right, so if this is she's a character from Crisis Core, which since you haven't played it, you probably didn't know who Cisne was when you got to Gengaga. And I won't spoil like who she is or what, because she it's cool that in the game she like every time like who are you? She's like, eh, it's not important kind of <laughs> kind of thing. So uh, it was really cool seeing Cisne back. It's it sucks that she was only kind of 
relegated to that moment. Like it's it kind it was kind of fan service of like, look who it is. You remember her, but uh, I did enjoy the whole thing with her and uh, Aerith. You know, I was talking to the parents. I liked the the story part of Gengaga, but I didn't like the open world in Gong, uh, Gengaga. Uh, the finding like it's like you have to go up to this place. You got to find which mushroom to bounce off of. I'm like, I, ugh, I don't want to find a mushroom to bounce off. But um, yeah, but I liked uh, obviously the story of when you get into the thing and Tifa or not Tifa. Well, yeah, Tifa gets stabbed by Cloud because he's losing his freaking mind again, and she goes down into the find discovers kind of her past when she sees the whispers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm going on, but yeah, it's definitely the Barrett part sticks out to me. But there's so many obviously awesome moments in this story that, well, I was gonna say we could talk about it forever, but that's what we're doing what? right now. So she got <laughs> she got stabbed. I don't remember that. I know she got well, pushed. She got pushed got in the pushed, water. Pushed. Well, yeah, he swiped at her. He stabbed her in the past, but he he swiped okay. uh, swiped at her. In yeah, the, she fell into Sephiroth the water. That, or was it Sephiroth that stabbed her? Sephiroth okay. stabbed her. Sephiroth stabbed her. I couldn't remember yeah. if he was losing his mind then or not, but yeah, okay. it was Sephiroth. But. All right, you confused me there. I'm like, I don't remember a stab, but all right, Sean. He, he, yeah, he tried. You, you've been waiting. You've been waiting your turn here. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, um, what are some emotional moments and memories for you from the from the story? Yeah, I definitely agree with you guys on the, the Barrett story. That, that's like a, a heart, heart wrenching story. I mean, um, just to like go back and just see the emotions on his face and see him and then again, relive it basically again in the trial with his wife and like being separated, seeing her dead. That was awful. Seeing his arm just cut off again and like before he has the can cannon and then like to feel like I know like a lot of people who like lose a limb that they, 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 they like oftentimes they'll say like, I wake up every day like and have to remember I don't have a limb because I dream like in my dreams I do. And when he wakes up in the trial and he has both his arms and he's like, is this free? And he can feel them. Like that is so powerful. Cause then he, then the next second he doesn't have it again. Um, that was powerful fighting. your basically Marlene's father, your best friend, the one that you feel responsible for basically screwing over and you feel responsible for screwing over the whole town. Yeah. Um, that was, that was just heavy, heavy stuff. Um, I really, in chapter 13 those trials basically all the characters basically reliving like pretty much like the worst moment of their lives mm -hmm. uh, i i know what you're saying about red 13 which is like kind of running up the wall but i like the story aspect it, it basically shows you like yeah like how he basically got captured by hojo and like he tattoos the 13 on him that's how he gets his like red 13 i'm just gonna call you red 13 mm -hmm. you're a red dog um, yeah <laughs> that was pretty powerful i just um, have Yuffie having to relive basically the end of Integrade and just like see mm -hmm. like the, the trauma on her face, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the characters blame like I feel like a lot of the characters blame themselves for a lot of things that have happened, even if it's not their fault. Like yeah. Tifa feels somewhat responsible for like kind of almost like surviving the Nibelheim like f like fire because her father mm -hmm. died. She, that part where you follow her father into the reactor and you see him dead lying there, ugh, that was awful. Um, a lot of strong, sad moments. Um, just like a lot of meaningful. Like I said, like the ending, like really hit me really, really hard. Um, even in chapter fourteen, when you um Cloud and Aerith in the alternate universe kind of wake up and like Aerith kind of like knows what's going on and Cloud has no idea and like playing the original, you kind of like know like oh gosh, like Cloud, yeah. you have it's no so idea what you're in for. Yeah, it's so heartbreaking because, you know, she's like, I just want to live in this moment because she know because in this like in the obviously in the original game, you have no idea when it's going to happen that that it's going to happen. But kind of replaying it, most people have played the original. So they're like, we know it's going to happen. So it, they kind of hint at it for you to, that she yeah. knows it's happening also. And you're like, oh, God, she just wants to live in this moment for as long as she can before she knows the inevitable is going to happen. Yeah. And yeah, it's heartbreaking. Um, the Dayton yeah. gold, gold saucer was really cool too. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, I went, I, I had Aerith. It was Cloud and Aerith for me. Um, watching the movie, actually, I actually thought it was really cool getting the S rank on that. Like, yeah. um, that when you're in there and like, uh, the characters are like Barrett's there and Red 13 and you're like fighting them, but it's like a quick time. You're pressing the buttons. I got an S rank my first time. I was pretty happy about that. But then, you know, going on the Ferris wheel, like we said, and just like walking around, uh, it just, it adds to the depth of the characters. Um, Another really cool moment for me is just, you know, anytime you woke up, like Cloud would go to bed and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're Zack and you're in Sector 5. First time that happens after the initial time when you play through him, but the first time you go back to him, I was like, what's going on? Like, I had no idea what was going on. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, they're 
like they had the X's on Barrett. To, like that was, I was totally lost at first, but then, you know, as you go, you kind of fill in the gaps and stuff. That was really cool. Um, like I love Zach. I think Zach's an awesome character. So like I said, anytime mm-hmm. you're with Zach, it's pretty cool. And in Gungaga, when you meet Zach's parents and you can really see like the, the loss on Aerith's face when she realized, when she asked Cloud, like, do you remember Zach? And he's like, no, I don't. Like, who's Zach? Like yeah. you can see the disappointment in her face. She's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, sorry. Yeah, go on. Cut no, you no, off go on. I just, there's, just so much, there's just so much to talk about. Um, so many emotional moments, but there's also like the, the lighthearted moments too. Like when you're at Costa del Sol and you're doing the seaside in stuff and you're, you know, having a beach party and then Hojo shows up out of nowhere and he's like, he's in a lab coat and everyone else is in bathing suits and you're like, you're fighting with like a stick. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking I fucking hate Hojo, dude. I was hoping so much that we would get to kill that mother that piece of shit, but we didn't get to. Uh, um, I'm assuming and hoping that in part three we'll get to finally kill that dude because I hate him so much. Um, you would hate I, him even more if you played First Soldier. That's that's one thing I wanted to mention um, that I feel like me not playing the original and not playing Crisis Core really did me a disservice because I don't really know like anything about zach so like anytime like he's showing up and we're like playing as him i'm just like i don't i don't know if i should care or why i should care and it's hitting you guys i'm sure way differently because you have that connection to him so i am this year i'm gonna play both of them i don't know when i'm gonna get to him soon i'm gonna play the original final fantasy 7 and uh crisis core um because i feel like i'm missing out a bit there yeah crisis core definitely gets you to love zach a lot more because i actually didn't play until this year i knew who zach was obviously from the original but i didn't play crisis core until uh or was it last year i don't know we're in the beginning of the year so i forgot what it was but uh yeah within the last year i played it (laughs) but uh yeah i play zach is a is an awesome character that you learn to love like i said in crisis core i don't really believe that they're best friends because it seemed kind of rushed that all of a sudden they're like buddy buddy it's like they don't barely know each other but yeah zach is a awesome character who yeah once you play crisis core you'll definitely love him a lot more okay yeah uh sean did you have something you wanted to say i just you know just there's so many just so many moments in this game and uh, I really, you know, some people, I saw some people complaining that, like, it's like, oh, well, they're in such dire consequences. How can they have these lighthearted moments? I'm like, it's, it's anything in, like, real life. I mean, when you're going through stuff, you're going to have, like, these moments where it's like, oh, let's, you have let's, to. Let's, let's, let's take a break from, you know, reality yeah. that the world's falling apart up, uh, around us or we're following these hooded figures because we know we, the, we, if we don't stop Sephiroth, the world's going to end. Like, the, obviously, mm-hmm. there's going to be lighthearted moments. There, um, yeah, there has to be. Humans can't handle uh, pain and despair 24-7. We would yeah, break. Um, exactly. Okay. I do. I want to make this its own topic here for timestamp purposes and for conversation purposes. You kind of already sort of talked about it, Sean, but I think we can get more in depth. And Hodge and I have not weighed in. Let's talk about the fan service and specifically the date. So in Chapter 12, you get to go on a, a special date with your, uh, with your waifu. Um, unfortunately for me... I did not get the date that I wanted. Um, I've said I've said far and away that Aerith is the best girl. I love Aerith so much. She is my waifu. I, I have to say, Aerith is awesome. I wanted Aerith to show up for the date. Um, when I was when I was hitting L one, um, she had she had the blue. I had her at four. Um, you know, I did all of her side stuff that I could remember doing. Although I, I miss I missed some side quests. Apparently, I missed a an Aerith quest. Unfortunately, when I woke up and I opened my door, instead of Aerith being there, there was, make sure sure the FBI is not here. Unfortunately, Yuffie uh, showed up for my, so (laughs) so instead of having a romantic date with my waifu, I had to babysit a little kid, uh, Yuffie. (laughs) I I love Yuffie. I really love Yuffie, but like in a pure wholesome way. Okay. She's like, she's like 15. Okay. We're not doing that. Um, so unfortunately my date was with Yuffie. Um, it was cool. I mean, we had fun. I got to see Aerith sing. Uh, Aerith was singing in the, uh, the Loveless, which was awesome, dude. The production on that play of Loveless was so good, dude. They did such a good job. Um, and then like you had the, like the little date on the, uh, on the wheel, um, whatever. And, and basically Yuffie's just sitting there talking about how she loves Zach. That that was her thing. Like she loves Zach apparently, and she's talking about how that. And I'm like, so this is my date here, okay? I I don't get to be with my waifu. I'm not with Aerith. I'm with this kid. You know, I'm probably gonna go to jail. And she doesn't even like me. She's talking about how she likes some other guy named Zach. And I'm just like, I fucked up. 
Aerith is the best girl. In my mind, I had a date with Aerith, but unfortunately I had Yuffie. Um, Hodge, what was uh, your date like? Tell us about I went, it. I went on a date with Aerith as well, um, but it's because I did everything, and I think the game just defaults to Aerith when everyone's kind of on the same level. I don't yeah, know I if... Yeah, the first one where it gets interrupted because of the, 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 the gun stuff, um, the shooting, uh, I think... I think I had Aerith on that one because on the beach beforehand, I chose to go to Aerith's side instead of Tifa's when you had to kind of choose which person to help. And I, so I think that edged it towards Aerith for me because uh, I just picked one. I didn't really care. I, I knew it would be like, oh, this is who you're picking. But I just went to Aerith for whatever reason. Um, because she's the best girl. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, my brother, I think, went on a date with Tifa and I think he says they kiss when they're on the Ferris wheel or something. So like they actually, I looked, I looked it up. Yeah, they do. They yeah. Do. So, uh, yeah. so I thought I was like, damn, I could have done that one. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I went with Aerith cause yeah, like I said, I was doing it for doing everyone's kind of, uh, uh, whatever, uh, friendship relationship thing. So it just kind of, I think it, I think someone said like people were complaining that it defaults to Aerith, but I mean, that's kind of what the story's supposed to be. Cause that's you're supposed to feel that emotional resonance when she dies in the end but um yeah so i went out with Aerith, and it was a lot of it was it was sweet like because it's it's fun it is funny like cloud is just so he has like that um he has like that drax from guardians of the galaxy mentality where he takes everything <laughs> so seriously where yeah. she's like where he's like I don't know. She'll make some joke of just like, Oh, you're going to kill me doing this. He's like, I would never hurt you. Like that kind of like mindset of like, he doesn't understand that she's like being like, and so she's like, I'm going to have to teach you to be a little more relationshipy kind of thing. Uh, but yeah. Oh, the one thing I did love in the, during the gold saucer date was the little throwback to, um, uh, Jesse where it shows her poster mm -hmm. and he's, yeah. and he talks about like, Oh, she was a great friend and all that stuff. And of course there's like, Oh, was she a more than a friend? He's like, no, she was a friend. And I let her die and I failed her and kind of that kind of thing. But it was, it was a really sweet little tribute to her that I really enjoyed. It was. Yeah. So you do, I do. I watched on YouTube. I watched all the dates cause I wanted to see what I missed. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you, you do kiss Tifa, uh, which is great. And actually, uh, weirdly enough, there is a kiss with Yuffie too. Um, when you're on the when you're on the little wheel with Yuffie, she's sitting there talking about how much she loves Zach for like five minutes, and then all of a sudden, for no reason, out of nowhere, she comes over and gives Cloud like a little peck on the cheek, um, and then she's all embarrassed afterwards. And then it does like the typical anime weeb trope where she's getting off and she's like, "Don't you dare tell anyone what happened here!" and runs off all embarrassed. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm oh, just sitting God. there. I'm just sitting there like. One, I'm going to jail, and two, <laughs> I'm pissed because I didn't get Aerith. Sean, tell us about your date, my friend. Yeah, so I had Aerith as well, and uh, like I said, I, that production, you know, in the in the theater was awesome, and I, I liked the little game that they had to play. But yeah, that throwback to, to Jesse was really cool. Um, yeah, really brought me back some like tear. Like that, that's like one of the only you know in the end game you get mentions of Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge because obviously Biggs mm -hmm. is in. Mm -hmm. on the alternate universe but and they start talking about wedge a little bit in one of the side quests in mm -hmm. the um proto relic side quest in cosmo canyon i think cosmo can yeah i think it's in cosmo canyon but like that's like the first like throwback to jesse and it like just brings back all the feels and like oh i wish he lived yeah why, didn't, why couldn't she just live um but yeah the, the ferris wheel date was pretty cool too um i did like i said i did watch all of them um funny enough did you midnight you said you watched all of them did you see the boys night one uh was vincent that the one sid. with with kate vincent sith and sid. Stuff? yeah kate sith vincent and sid they yeah i did watch that that was funny yeah they have a guy's night that's the one my dad got <laughs> he's in chapter he's in chapter 13 right now so i asked him this morning after my race I'm like hey dad did you do the date scene yet he's like yeah i did i'm like oh did you do I i'm thinking i'm like oh you probably got like tifa right tifa or era it's like no i got the guy's night <laughs> and my, my dad's a that's huge uh, my dad loves sid like he loves sid and all the that's like his main thing in all the final fantasy games he's like yeah i, I was pretty pumped i got the sid one that's pretty funny <laughs> that's um, funny i, I don't hilarious. know i don't know if i would have been more disappointed by getting the boys night or getting yuffie because i was just i was pretty disappointed um both of those would be pretty disappointing because don't get me wrong i really love yuffie as a character i think she's awesome but i don't see her as a romantic uh partner yeah. because she's, she's a kid she's, she's a little kid she's, she's like and a, you can tell like 16 and cloud's 21 
And you can tell her mannerisms are very childish. Um, so yeah. I don't see Yuffie as a romantic partner. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed, but I do, I do absolutely love Yuffie as a character. She's awesome. Oh, I um, love, I love Yuffie. Yeah, she's great. Um, do you, you guys been... want to transition into the game or was there something else you guys wanted to get to? I was going to say one more thing. Would you have been more disappointed if Red 13 just showed up? I think I think I'd rather have Yuffie than Red Thirteen, okay. <laughs> uh, because then we're then we're getting into bestiality, and that's a bit weird. No, I'm just kidding. I uh, I love Yuffie though, because I I love her and Barrett's relationship in this game. They're like mm -hmm. kind of like the they're like kind of like the brother and sister, like fighting over just stupid crap all the time. They're yeah. so like I think Yuffie's adorable. She's a she's so goofy. She's like the really quirky teenager. She's just mm -hmm. she's obsessed with materia. It's, I don't, she's. She's adorable. I love you. The number say, one materia yeah. hunter. Yeah. <laughs> she's great. Very she's a very anime character. Very, yeah, very anime. Yeah. Um you say father you say um brother sister. I think like stepfather, like daughter, or you marry someone who has like a kid that she had a kid really young. So oh. he's like only like he's like, you know, like maybe like fifteen years older than her, and he's like, oh, Yeah. Shit. <laughs> and then yeah. somehow somehow he gets stuck with her. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I was thinking of. All right. Yeah. So I do have a game here. I want to end the show on this game. It's going to be fun. But before I do that, I don't want to rush us. Is there anything else for the entirety of the game? Any final bars, any final thoughts that you guys want to get to? I'm going to pass the ball, first of all, to you, Sean. Um, final thoughts, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. What else do you want to mention? Uh, I just have some speculation about what the next game is going to be called. Um, and I know Crisis Core was called Crisis Core Reunion. But if it's not Final Fantasy VII Reunion, that's I'm what gonna, I was thinking too. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like, whoa! They they kept saying reunion. Oh, we're gonna reunion, mm -hmm. reunion, or uh, something along those lines. But you know, just cause, because they called Crisis Core Reunion, I don't think it. I'm like, well, will they do mm -hmm. that again? So I don't know. Uh, that's my thing. I think it, I think they will go with reunion. But uh, Todd, do you have any speculation about what you think it's gonna be called? Reloaded. It's gonna join the Matrix universe. No. Um... <laughs> I don't know. Reunion, that's the one that makes the most sense. But yeah, with like, it being Crisis Core Reunion, that that kind of that'd be kind of dumb for them to be like, all right, Final Fantasy VII Reunion and Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. It's like, it, I mean, that, but then again, Japanese games have really stupid names. So it's Yeah, Queen I could. Three fifty I three fifty eight over two days. So kind of. Yeah, I could. I could see it, but yeah, it would be kind of crazy if they did call two games in the same franchise reunion. But other than that, I wouldn't. I couldn't think anything else that it would be. I think they're definitely going to stick with the re, like the yeah, re. It'll definitely yeah. be re. Well, because didn't they show it off and it started with an R? Like when they announced reunion, they showed that there's going to be a third one. It was like had an R, or maybe they wasn't showing that. But I feel like it'll be re something. I yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Sean. Too when I was watching like the final uh, scene with the plane, and they kept mentioning reunion. Um, I was thinking, I bet they're gonna call um, the the third game Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Um, but how about this? Here's a good here's a good thought that I had. Final Fantasy VII Return of by far the best girl in the series, Aerith. What do you guys <laughs> What do you guys think? That that could be the name. That's a very oh, yeah. uh, Latin two Return of J Revenge of Jafar. Because <laughs> Eris gonna come back the, to life. Return of the Ancients. Eris gonna come back to life, and I'm gonna finally get my date with her, and all is gonna be well <laughs> in the universe, my friends. No, nah, she's all gonna right. marry Zach. Sean, are you satisfied with Final Fantasy VII before we get to uh, the the game to end it? Yeah, I'm I'm satisfied. I just hope we get part three before uh, twenty. I, I I hope we get it by 2028. Okay, Hodge, this is your moment. Any final thoughts, last bars, and, and things you want to say for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? No. I mean, uh, one thing I will say is I the Junon level was really cool going up into that city. But, uh, yeah, it's it was just an amazing game. And I, I it was the, one of the perks of me being unemployed recently is that I was able to just to play it all day, every day. And so I was able to kill it in 72 hours in like three weeks or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I loved this game. I cannot wait for part three whenever, hopefully sooner than later that comes out this, 
yeah this for the the world of final fantasy 7 is just so good i'm gonna replay the original this year because i had i had the bug but i was like i gotta get i want to start skyrim so that's why i went to that instead but um otherwise i would have gone straight into final fantasy 7 because i love the original and i definitely want to replay it and kind of see where the differences are because it is cool that like I played 114 hours basically between these two games and the original game is like a 15 to 20 hour game. So I really want to see like how much they expanded on and kind of how simple the original was. But yeah, I love this game. Can't wait for part three. Right on. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and do this here for fun before I get into the game, which we're going to end the show with um, let's go ahead and give this, well, let's give it a score uh, on midnight critic, which I like to call, you know, I'm so clever uh, <laughs> midnight critic. I'm going to rate final fantasy seven rebirth a 94. Um, what do you guys think? What do you think Hodge? If you had to rate it, I know scores are stupid, but just for, just for fun, what would you rate the game? Probably like somewhere between like a 91 and a 95 kind of in that range. Cause yeah, there's just a couple pacing things that I was like, this wasn't needed, but it's not bad. Um, that kind of, and then kind of the multiverse thing is kind of a little like, did you have to do that kind of thing? But at the same time, we'll see how it obviously wraps up in the third one. But uh, so yeah, probably low nineties somewhere in there. Sean, a plus ten out of ten spectacular if if i had him as a student if i had this game as a student it'd be a star student exceeds all expectations <laughs> demonstrates academic excellence in the classroom all right all right okay i think we've done a great job i, oh, I had this thought oh i was gonna say because you asked me this last week when we were with Locke, uh if i like it better than remake what do you guys yes. think i do like it more i like rebirth e- more yes i do i do like it better than remake but when I say Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game of all time, I'm including every piece yeah. of the Final Fantasy VII universe. So I'm including the original remake, Rebirth, Dirge of Cerberus, Crisis Core, First Soldier. Dirge of Cerberus is overhated. Not oh, overrated, overhated. No. I think it's criminally underplayed, too. Mm-hmm. I love it. People hate it and kid. they never played it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. All right. Okay, guys, I think we've had a really fun conversation we really broke down all the stuff that we loved a couple things that we didn't it's a great game as you see all of us are giving it super high marks one of the best games of the year for sure um it's it's definitely it's it's great um i thought it would be fun to end this episode with a tier list um this is what we're going to do i haven't told you guys about this this is a midnight creation i just had this idea in my mind this is what we're going to do it's just a fun game i'm going to ask you guys you have to rate each character on a scale from one to 10 by how much you like them as it, it, whatever, as overall picture, the character, their story, their combat, period, how much you like them. And then we're going to, we're going to tally our scores at the end and we're going to rate as like a tier list, um, how much we liked each character. We obviously, we love all the characters, but who do we love the most? So I'm going to go ahead and start with Barrett. And I'm going to pass it to Sean. You have to rate Barrett on a scale of 1 to 10. 1, you didn't like him. 10, you absolutely loved him, and he's the best character ever. What is your score for Barrett, sir? 9. Barrett gets a 9. Okay, very strong. Hodge, what does Barrett get for you? I got to say 9 as well, because I just love how much they expanded his story in this game. And like I said, it was the best emotional beat. I loved playing as him. Like I said, he was the cheat code of the stagger. He's hilarious. He's he's a loving character. He does everything for his friends and family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's I don't know. I don't know. He might be a 10. I'm just going to go with nine, but I don't want to call it doing perfect. We're not not going with anyone. But yeah, Barrett is awesome. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and give Barrett a nine as well. Um, I really love Barrett. Um, you know, his combat was great. His character is great. You know, he's a lovable, caring guy. Um, as you mentioned, like his little interactions with Yuffie where they're like mm-hmm. punch, fake punching each other and stuff was was adorable. Um, yeah. He was great. His little story with uh, losing the arm, t- trying to save his friends. And he was just awesome. So Barrett has a nines all around. That's a score of 27. Let's go ahead and move on to the next character that I have on the list. And these are in no particular order, people. And it's going to be our main boy, Cloud. Sean, one through 10. What is Cloud? 10 out of 10, my favorite video game protagonist of all time. Uh, adore him. Adore his story. Um, really feel for him. And, he, you know, I 
when he's having these like you know moments where he's like basically losing his mind and he can he knows he's basically losing his mind and people keep reminding him he's losing his mind Mm -hmm. um i just absolutely love cloud always have 10 on 10 10 out of 10 okay hodge what's cloud um i'm gonna go i'm gonna say an eight because I know, I know, but <laughs> it's it's purely because he has that kind of I don't know if it's like an anime trope or what. He has that he has that trope of he's kind of just a brick wall in terms of his personality. Like his backstory and what he's going through, his combat, it's all awesome, but he's that guy who is just like he takes everything way too seriously and it's obviously like I said it's funny in like the Drax way when he just completely mit- like a sarcasm just goes way over his head. He's just too stupid to like notice he's too serious about it. But I like, I guess, I mean, I could see that it's that because when, when you go back to his quote unquote flashbacks where he's actually Zach, he has a very upbeat Zach personality and you could tell that that's not his character because obviously it's not him, but yeah, him himself, he's just kind of a, He's a little bit of a brick wall for me in in personality wise, so I got to knock him a few points for that. But other than that, like hit, what he goes through, his story and everything is awesome. But yeah, I'm gonna okay. give him an eight. All right, I'm gonna give Cloud an eight as well um, because he is <laughs> he is kind of boring at times. He's also very very anime anime tropist where he's dense. He can't tell at all that Aerith is clearly hitting on him and he he has no clue. And Tifa sometimes hits on him and he has no clue. It's like. Um, and also he has moments where I, you know, I don't fully understand what's going on, but he has moments where he's like completely being like mind controlled by Sephiroth. It seems like, and he's doing stupid stuff like attacking Tifa and, uh, handing the black materia to Sephiroth. I don't know why, hopefully when I play the original game or in part three, they explain why I, I'm guessing it has to do with something with his soldier training. Um, but you know, he's great. You know, he's a great character. Um, you know, he does his best. Um, but I'm going to give him an eight. All right, Sean, uh, I, you look like you wanted to come in there. Did you want to defend Cloud real quick before we move on? No, I was going to say, no, he's just my favorite. So disappointing he's not going to be number one. It's okay. okay. <laughs> Moving on, the next character that I have on the list is going to be everyone's favorite Materia Hunter, Yuffie, Yuffie Chan. Sean, one through ten, what is Yuffie? Six. Oof. She's a six. Oof, harsh. Um, no, like I My said, heart. I still like all the characters. Now, uh, are we? We're allowed to give characters the same score that we give previous. Yeah, one, no, yeah. Okay. No, you're rating this character, and it doesn't matter what you gave previous okay. characters. You're just talking yeah. I'd about say Yuffie. six. I, I I like her, but I didn't really like. I said I didn't gel with her combat that well. Um, she's she's very little. She's like a little kid. Uh, I think I don't know. I like I enjoy the other characters a lot more than her. So she she's she I will spoiler she spoiler she's gonna this is my least lowest rated character at you um not a big fan that hurts me all right um sean or hodge yuffie i'm gonna give her an eight i really i like i said i love her she's goofy and her combat's awesome the only thing that gets gets me is there are some times where like i understand what her mission and all that is it well especially later on in the game when she finds the dead wutai soldiers and that's when she has like a really good emotional beat and she actually kind of drops the shtick of like I'm the materia, like that kind of thing. So that is a great moment. But when it's like she basically almost dives into the water because there's a giant materia on the on the monster's belly. And it's just it, there's it's there's a certain point where it's like we get it. She's the materia person. I don't need to hear about it every two seconds. So I'm going to knock her a couple points for that. But yeah, I, I, I love you. So I'm not going to okay. knock it too much. Right on, right on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give Yuffie a nine for me. I lo- I absolutely love Yuffie. She's one of the best characters. She has the best combat in the game, in my opinion. So fun. Um, she is also very funny. There was a funny moment uh, where you're going up an elevator. I want to say it was in like Canyon or something. And Yuffie goes on this long little diatribe. I shared it in Discord. She goes on this long, like, minute, two-minute long diatribe where she's like, we're going to form the Yuffie squad, and Cloud's going to join, and the whole world is going to be afraid of us, and everyone's going to respect us, and oh, Yuffie! And then Cloud is just like, will you please shut up? <laughs> it was so funny. Um, but yeah, I love Yuffie. She's awesome. She's a pure, innocent little kid. Protect her at all costs. Um, she's awesome, and I'm going to give her a nine. So... Let's move on. The next character that we have in no particular order is everyone's favorite Senate Senator Tifa. Tifa, 
Sean, Raider. I'm going to give Tifa a 10. I really like Tifa a lot. Um, like I said earlier, um, when I said we were talking best girl, Tifa was my best girl. I, I just think that she goes through so much. She care. I think she really cares about everyone in the party, like more than herself. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes out of her, she goes out of her way to help other people over she herself. Does. Like I said, uh, I think her backstory, you know, seeing her father just die in a reactor, seeing her hometown burn down, and the emotion she felt when they go back to Nibelheim and they see it's all rebuilt as like a kind of like a cover up. Um, yeah. So I like Tifa. Tifa. And her combat's awesome. All right, fair enough. So you give Tifa a ten. Um, Hodge, Tifa. I'm gonna give her a nine. Um, really, the only thing is, like I said, I wasn't huge on her combat. It wasn't bad. It's just she wasn't the comp, the one I enjoyed the most. Uh, but yeah, like you said, her story is so good. She's so caring for everyone. Um, I even love the fact that, like, throughout the game, everyone's like, "You're so beautiful," but she's like so modest that she's like, "I'm, I'm okay." It's like, no, you're like literally the hottest person in video game history. But uh, like, and so I, I just love her like modesty and how much she cares for everyone. And it's yeah, she's awesome. It's just yeah, her combat wasn't wasn't up there for me. So I, I'll give her a nine. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and rate Tifa an eight. Um, I thought Tifa was pretty cool. Like I said, I don't have the luxury of knowing the original game and Crisis Core. I'm sure you get to know her more. I felt like she didn't get as much. I know Sean, Sean broke out the numbers and he's like, she has as many lines, but maybe they just, they didn't seem as powerful. I thought Aerith really stole the show in this and uh, Tifa didn't get as much shine. Um, I like Tifa. Obviously she's freaking beautiful. Um, If we're judging the girls on best looks, Tifa is winning by far. (laughs) <laughs> um, but Aerith, Aerith is best girl for me because of the personality and, and stuff, but we're talking about Tifa. I'm going to give her an eight. Her combat was fun. She's beautiful. Um, I do just want to point out that I think it's lame. Shame on you, Square Enix for censoring Tifa a little bit. Uh, I'm not, t- I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about young Tifa, by the way, at the start, because she, I think she was like 16 there or something where they added like a black under uh, shirt. Right. Um, but they did that on adult Tifa too. Like when you're playing the main game, she has a black undershirt. Um, if you go back to Rebirth, she did not have that. There was full-on cleavage. And as a red-blooded male, I got to say that's a downgrade. Um, but it's, it's, I'm joking, though. It's not a big deal. I'm, I'm joking. Um, I didn't even notice. I, had, they did, I didn't even notice. They slightly yeah. censored her, but who really cares? I'm honestly, I'm just having a laugh here, just joking a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, so she gets an eight for me. Let's move on to the next character. The next character we're going to have is going to be everyone's favorite cat, Kate Sith. Sean, rate him. I'm going to give Kate Seth a nine. I really like him. Comedic. He's very funny. Uh, speaks in like basically riddles a lot of time. And he's just, he's, he's funny. And then that part where, you know, he turns on them and he goes, I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't, I, I knew it was going to hurt, but I didn't think it would hurt this much. Something along those lines. Um, he really grew me. And as a little kid, I had a Kate Seth plushie when my dad went to Japan in 2003. So uh-huh. shout out to my dad for getting me that. And I still have it. It's at my parents' house, though. But I will. You know what? Next episode, I'm going to bring it on. Yeah. So um, what is Kate? He's a robot? Like, what's the deal with him? He has, yeah, like, there's like multiple. Legit. There's like multiple Kate Sith, like, okay. robots. But he has one conscious, though, because he was able to remember. Um, you, you'll, you, you'll learn. I'll learn. We okay. don't want to spoil anything. Hodge, Kate Sith, rate. Um, I'm going to give him, sorry, I'm going to give him like a six because he is just kind of the, I, I like him, but he's always been the character like in the original and in this one, he's always one I left out of my party. I never used him until I liked when I, when I played with him, I never minded it. His, I actually did enjoy this, the plots kind of where he would get off the Moogle to go with like through events to kind of go do something and then you could summon it again all that kind of stuff but yeah he just was never a character that stuck out to me uh and i have nothing wrong with him like i always kind of found it funny when they'd say something to me he goes oh you mean little old me meow like kind of that kind of kind of stuff but yeah he's just like i can't rate everyone a freaking eight or above so i just gotta he's just kind of less memorable so i'm just gonna put him at a six because yeah i don't really i never really used him that much Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, not everyone can be a 9 or a 10. That's fair. Um, I'm going to give Kate Sith a 7. I really liked his character. I love cats. Uh, I am a cat person in real life. I think cats are... I like dogs, too. No, shout out to dogs and cats. Uh, we don't We don't deserve them. Cats and dogs are both just too good for humans. Um, but yeah, he's a cat. He's adorable. Um, I love the way he talks. 
especially his i because i i checked him out in english dub and i mostly played in japanese though i thought his japanese voice was 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 better like it was just great he was so playful and funny um but yeah shout out to kate says i give him a seven his combat i i didn't like his combat at all but i liked his character his arc the betrayal i understood why he did the betrayal and the redemption at the end um i hope we see him he, he's he's there he's on the plane so he's going to be in uh part three and uh, i'm looking forward to more this brings us to best girl in my opinion uh let's get to Aerith. Uh, this uh this game really was kind of a, she was kind of like the main character of this game it was kind of about her um and and cloud of course you know um sean Aerith raider i'm gonna give her an eight um like i said she really grew on me um in this game uh some of the emotional beats like i said i i teared up when she was killed um glad that she's living in the uh multi-universe and cloud can kind of still see her in the, her own universe i have a feeling she's going to act as some some sort of like a guide for the party in part three and like cloud will be like the the messenger between the two um and i think eventually hopefully she gets to be you know brought back where they merge the worlds together in some type of a crazy comic book event i hope spider-man so. will be there Hodge? Goku. <laughs> um i'm gonna give her a seven just because i i love her and her whole story and her emotional beats but i didn't care for her combat because she was just kind of a support character um so i just gonna knock her for that like her the, her singing the singing scene was so beautiful i love when she's performing on stage singing and all that and obviously this the trial where she's trying to find help for a mother and all that like she has so many great moments and she's such a great character like i said she's so innocent and She's lovely, but yeah, I just, her combat, I just, she was a support character and then I stopped using her. So, though I did enjoy like the temple stuff where you had to like collect the, like the aura kind of stuff to build, rebuild mm. the buildings and stuff. That was kind of fun, but yeah, I just, she wasn't a huge, I didn't, wasn't huge on her in combat. So yeah, what yeah. I give her seven, I think. <laughs> Whatever right, fair, I enough. fair enough. I am going to give Aerith a 10, 10 out of 10. She's perfect. Um, as I have mentioned so many times, I love her. Um, her combat, I will agree that her combat kind of sucks when you are controlling her. Um, it's not the best. It's just kind of slow, and I feel like the enemy's getting in on you too much. Um, but I did, she was an amazing support, like I talked about. Um, really, like like I said, crank up the magic damage on her, put Comet and um, the Synergy Materia together, and have her just cast free Comets nonstop while you're playing as Tifa or whoever you want to play as. She's really strong in that role. And also she is the best healer because she has the highest magic attack. Um, so I think she's really good in combat, just not so much when you control her yourself. <laughs> um, but I'm going to give Aerith a 10. I absolutely love her. I pray, I pray to God that we somehow are able to bring her back to life in part three. Um, as I understand, I don't think that happened in the original, but hopefully they retcon and, and, and bring her back. All right. So that's Aerith. Let's move on to, I think this is the final one. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone that's playable. We have Red 13. Sean, rate him. Red 13, I'm going to give a strong 7. He would have been an 8, but when he goes to that child voice, it didn't fit that. It didn't fit what I uh, thought of as a kid. He goes to that child voice, and I'm like, what? you sound like uh, Simba when he's in Lion King. <laughs> the Matthew Broderick Simba. Yeah. Um, no, I, I do like him, but, um, the voice, when he, when he goes back to the kid voice, it does kind of throw, it threw me off a lot. Um, I do like his combat a lot. And like I said, that when you're in the trial and you see the backstory, you can get tattooed with 13 on him. Um, but yeah, I go with a seven. Okay. Hodge. I'm going to go with a seven as well. Um, his combat was fun. His story wasn't as impactful as i it was great obviously but it wasn't as impactful as like Aerith or barrett's or tifa's or any like any of their stories so i'm gonna knock him down for a little bit for that but yeah his uh what was the power where he, he had used two atb gauges and it was like just that, a that big explosion fun. no it was like yeah. a big explosion oh, thing okay, uh, yeah yeah i can't remember what it was called but that that was so powerful i used that he was always if it was a fire weakness enemy i always threw him in because he was so good with that but yeah his uh his story the kid stuff i thought i thought it was kind of a little goofy twist but yeah it was a little like jarring but yeah so i'll i'll, I'll give him a seven okay i'm gonna go ahead and give red 13 a six um 
you know, his combat was cool. I thought he was really good at uh, filling up the stagger gauge. He was pretty good at that. Um, but I just didn't care that much for his story too much. I thought it was kind of tragic how he was uh, abused by Hojo. And like I said, I really hate Hojo and I want to kill him. And one of the main <laughs> one of the main reasons I hate Hojo so much is because of what he did to Red 13. Like during the trial, you see him. Uh, that really hit me. I didn't like that. But Red 13, I liked him, but he was probably my least favorite of, of the bunch. So I'm going to give him a six. All right, so let's go ahead and tally the results, people. Um, this is what we have. This is the definitive games over plastic tier list. I'm going to go from worst to best. None of them are bad, but the, the character that we liked the least was Red 13 with a score of 20. That was uh, the, the score when we added it together. Um, the second person was Kate Sith with a score of 22. So those are kind of like the two animal side characters. I guess that makes sense. Um, next after that, we had Yuffie with the score of 23. She was the one after that, that we liked the least, I guess, or best. Um, after that, we had Aerith coming in. She had a 25 score. And I guess fittingly enough, the core three were our three favorites. Um, we have, let me look at the math here. Uh, Cloud. Cloud got a 26. So he was our third favorite. Um, and then there was a tie. Both Barrett and Tifa were tied for our favorites with a combined score of 27. So there we go. It's definitive. Games over plastic. The best two characters in, this, in the game are Barrett and Tifa. Next is Cloud. Then is Aerith. And then we had Yuffie. And then at the bottom, we had the two animals, um, Kate, Sith, and Red, 13. So that's going to do it for us. Um, as we've been going for an hour and 45 minutes, that's a lot longer than I thought we would do, but it's a great game and we had a great discussion. Uh, so we're going to go to final thoughts and wrap this up. Um, Sean, what are your final thoughts or anything else you want to get to as we close out this episode? Amazing game. 10 out of 10, A+. Plus, demonstrates academic excellence. Can't wait for part three. <laughs> Please be here. I hope it comes out in 2028, but honestly, you know, take your time, you know. I'll, it, it will be here when, it, when it'll be here, and uh, I can't wait. Right on. Hodge, yeah. final thoughts? Valedictorian student. Um, yeah, I, I loved it. Loved every minute of it. It was it, When I finished it at like 70-something hours, I couldn't believe I put that much time in it. It did not feel like I put that much time into it because there have been games you finish where it's like a 20, 30-hour game. You're like, can I just get to the end of this thing already? And that, I when I remember opening it once, it was at like 64 four hours or something i was like i really already put that much time in this game holy crap like it, it never it never felt like i was just like when am i getting done with this thing so i loved it i cannot wait for part three um yeah i adore adore this game i say i know i say adore a lot and people give give me shit for that but yeah i love i love <laughs> i love this game all right Yep, and I loved it too. Like I said, 94 out of 100 on Midnight Critic. Uh, probably the best game that I've played that has come out. Definitely the, the best game that I've played that has come out this year. So it's, it's right now leading the pack for me for Game of the Year for 2024. Although it is not the best game that I've played this year because I played Baldur's Gate 3 before this. And personally, I thought that was a better game. But they're both phenomenal. They're both phenomenal. This is an awesome <laughs> game. I freaking love it. So that is going to do it for us, guys. This has been special episode number one. The final Fantasy VII Rebirth spoiler cast is done. Please clap, everybody. Please clap. We're done. And we're out. Goodbye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Stay gold, Cloud. Stay gold.